Hello, and welcome back to the Carbon Capture Magazine podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Pekarski, and today I am joined by David Phillips, head of UK and investor relations at Acre, Acre Carbon Capture. Thank you for joining us today, David. Welcome onto the podcast. Uh, thank you. Uh, really, really looking, looking forward to joining up with this one. Yes, and we're happy to have you. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and Acre Carbon Capture? Sure, absolutely. So um, as you as you said, I'm head of the UK in investor relations. I joined about 13 months ago. Um, already feels like about 13 years because this world is moving so quickly in the, <laughs> in the carbon capture land. Um, I um, uh, I used to work for Arca Solutions before, which actually was the company we came from back in 2020. Um, I did investor relations there between 2014 and 2016. But most of my life has been on the investment side as an energy specialist, um, looking at the whole energy uh, spectrum, you know, oil and gas, renewables and, and so on. A long time ago, um, I did that for about 20 years, but a long time ago, I, I did a chemistry PhD, which wasn't really useful at all until now. And of course, Chemistry is one of the key technical inputs into carbon capture. So mm -hmm. uh, finally, the long game paid off. And uh, I really enjoy having a, a close link with our technology team, especially to, to, to discuss what we're up to. Um, that's that's me. Uh, our company, um, we're just over two years old. So we're, we're a toddler. We're not even at uh, junior <laughs> school yet. But, but really, we've been around for 15, 20 years because we've been part of the ARCA group. Um, obviously, with a with a Norwegian heart, with a Norwegian base behind it, and that's put us in a very good position to have a early access into one of the pioneers in terms of promoting uh, carbon capture and decarbonisation. I mean, back in the 1990s, um, Statoil, and I use the old name deliberately, was looking at decarbonising its oil and gas portfolio. Um, the Arca Group was involved in the Sleipner platform project, where, which has been putting or capturing and putting CO2 into into a, an offshore reservoir since 1996. Um, we, uh, as, a, as a company then called Arca Clean Carbon, we did a lot of work around R&D um, with the chemistry and the engineering uh, around carbon capture in the early 2000s. Uh, we built um, a mobile test unit in 2008 that we still use now. That's a fully scaled up but small uh, uh, carbon capture plant with a capacity of around 1,200 tonnes of CO2 per year. But it, that, that's really a, not so much about how big it is. It's more about how mobile and flexible it is to test our technology on site with the various emissions. Uh, that, you know, and that, that's been a fantastic business development tool and technical development tool that we still use now. And actually are building another one uh, ready, ready next year. Um, we also built a larger plant in Norway at the Mongstad refinery, and that was in 2012, and that's 80,000 tonnes per year. And that's a specifically designed uh, test facility that we and others uh, have used ever since then to test our technology. Um, so in, in all that time, uh, along with a, a lot of R&D with great R&D partners like Sintef and uh, other uh, operations in Norway, we spent well over 50,000 hours uh, working through how our technology uh, functions with a range of flue gases uh, around uh, cement and waste to energy, gas to power, and so on. So there's quite a there's quite a wide mix of areas that we've looked to use our technology on. Um, now, in that bearing that in mind, um, we are now really hitting the market running because uh, the, the carbon capture market was quiet for some time during the middle middle of the last decade, but has really woken up since about 2018, 2019, as various companies have uh, really progressed their own net zero ambition and, and so on. So we, um, we've we really, you know, we, we were spun out of Arca Solutions in middle of 2020. Um, we are now building one uh, large plant in Norway at a, as a Norsems or Heidelberg Cements Norsem cement plant uh, in, uh, in Southeast Norway. We're also delivering a modular plant uh, with waste of energy, which is a project, a company called Twents in the Netherlands. And we also are delivering two um, feed contracts, or let's say feed studies, um, for two very large gas to power plants, along with the consortiums uh, in in the UK. Um, so that's that's really where we come to. We have a, a Northern European focus, um, but I'm sure we'll discuss this later on. You know, there's a lot of interest in the North American market coming as well. Right, that's quite the portfolio you have there. So, what technological solutions does Acre offer? Well, we're all about um, post-combustion carbon capture. Um, so in other words, something where you burnt 
uh, a material, most likely natural gas, to generate power or something, uh, or part of the cement process, or part of uh, steel, uh, let's say, metallurgy or, or metal manufacturing. Um, we capture the gas, uh, where we treat the gas after that, uh, hence the post-combustion uh, phrase, uh, with a what's essentially a reversible chemical reaction. It's it's not. It doesn't, it's not um, adsorption, it doesn't stick to something, it actually reacts with it. So we have a chemical called an amine, which is a very well understood uh, chemical to use in this context. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we have a very refined version of what, what essentially is a very mature piece of chemistry. And our, when I say refined, I mean it's energy efficient, it's uh, biodegradable, um, quite non-corrosive, relatively non-corrosive, and also has a very, very strong um, HSE or environmental profile, very low emissions, very low side products and so on. And I think that's probably, if you were to ask me what's our one USP from the technology, I would say it's very much that environmental footprint that is very, uh, that is, you know, as benign as it can be really. Um, but that's a that's a basic technology, a sort of an amine-based post-combustion carbon capture. Now that, that's, that's the center of the technology. But really when you look at carbon capture, it's part chemistry, which is the bit I've just talked about, mm -hmm. and it's also part engineering. And the engineering is, is all about design and making things smaller and more efficient. So our portfolio of products right now, we have one modular plant, which is called a Just Catch, and that comes in a 100,000 tonne per year of CO2 capture size. Also, there's a 40,000 tonne per year one, but the 100,000 tonne per year one is the one we tend to do most of our business development around. There's also a Just Catch offshore, which you might guess is a is an offshore uh, uh, let's say um, optimized cousin for the for the just catch modular plant, um, and we have what's called a big catch, which is the more bespoke model that can be uh, as large as you like. And um, the one in Norway we're building right now with the North Sem cement plant is 400,000 tons per year, and the ones we're designing in the UK along with the consortium are two million tons per year each. So there's quite a range in that. Right. Okay. You've touched a little bit on what your company is doing now, what are your priorities in the next few years? Well, good question. Um, there's a there's a mixture of a mixture of priorities really. I mean, we're in a in a growth industry, no question about that. Uh, I think the second half of this decade is going to be an absolute barnstormer in terms of how much new work could be coming. Um, in the next few years, I think we have a we have a bit of a dual track um, priority. Number one is to make sure that we uh, win the right projects, make sure we secure growth, make sure we really build a franchise um, based around uh, uh, Northern Europe and also increasingly looking at what could be happening across the pond in, in North America. Um, the other part really is to make sure we deliver what we're building right now because this industry doesn't have the best record. If you look at the last 10, 15 years, there's been a bit of a false start. You know, there was some optimism in 2009, 10, 11, uh, that there was going to be a, quite a lot of carbon capture investment. And it didn't really happen for various reasons. Um, and uh, given that, well, one of the reasons was some of the plants didn't work very well. They weren't very reliable. So I think it really it's very dependent on us, it's hugely important to make sure that we deliver plants on time um, and that they they work uh, efficiently and can be oh, and are a good example. I mean, we would love to look back um in a couple of years time and look at, uh, let's say, a handful of our modular plants working well. Um, they have a tremendous market potential with a modular obviously being the, the more affordable end of the uh, carbon capture spectrum. Um, and also to look, look back and see some of the big plants also well underway as well. Um, think that building that record is uh, is is super important. The, the other, there's one other angle which I forgot to mention. The other angle, you know, we what we're doing right now is based on quite a, um, a well understood, but I would say very optimized, of course, but very well understood chemistry and technology. And um, what also is very much dependent on us is to develop the next um, the next uh, generation of technologies that this industry needs. And we have a, a number of areas uh, under our hood that we're looking at from our technology portfolio, our research and innovation portfolio. Um, they are not near the market yet, but I think you know, certainly as a priority, we would really look to use our expertise to develop some of these new ideas and also bring them to market and make them commercial. Yes, and speaking of development, Acre recently entered a memorandum of understanding with Storega. What does that mean for your company's business as well as the UK CCUS market as a whole? Yeah, that's a very, very interesting um, part. I mean, uh, sitting in the UK as I am right now, I'm, 
maybe if I run that question uh, in reverse, I mean, the UK market is very important. Um, if you look at the size of the potential in the UK market and look at look at it on a European context, you know, look at it all across Northern Europe, the, the UK itself, along with its uh, big industrial cluster style of development, um, where you have uh, two big clusters as part of what's called the government's track one uh, strategy to develop CCUS in the UK or CCS in the UK rather. Um, that uh, that you know, the UK is a, a very large portion of of Europe, and um, and also is one that is really based around these big industrial clusters. So uh, if for us, it's a very attractive market in terms of both the size uh, and also the the, in, the industries. I mean, there's a lot of gas to power, a lot of waste to energy, as me, as well as many other uh, you know um, industrial em emitters in there as well. And these industries are ones where we've done a lot of work over the last 10, 15 years around testing our technology. So we have a very data heavy, uh, let's say, background in terms of how well we know our systems should work with, with these types of with these types of industries. So for us, the UK is very, very interesting. Now, the reason we've linked up with Sturega, and also there are a few other MOUs uh, that have a, a similar theme to them. This industry, uh, as you know, uh, is, is quite new, really, in terms of scaling up. And what you realize is that um, the, the theme of collaboration uh, and the, the theme of collaboration and the theme of, um, uh, let's say, partnership are hugely important in understanding and accelerating the value chain. Because the, you find that maybe one part of the value chain is well understood, uh, for instance, uh, the carbon capture, but maybe some other parts like the storage or the transport, if you have to use marine transport, are not as clear. So given that, um, you know, we, we are looking at forming a number of partnerships across the across the board um, with uh, with key people. And one of the very interesting areas we, we partnered with has been Sturega. And Sturega is, is more of a project developer. They're a private company, have some excellent skills uh, in their in their teams, in their portfolio. Um, for us, uh, they you know, we're looking at really linking up a lot of specialist skill sets, uh, very good experience. Um, and, and helping really to understand the full value chain to accelerate uh, the overall carbon capture cycle. So I would say this is really, you know, the simple main umbrella under which we we work with Sturega is to look at how we can collaborate across the value chain, share ideas, optimize it all, and really try to accelerate as much as we can. Great. Yes, I'm sure it'll be a great uh agreement you have worked out there. So you have a lot of developments going across the UK with the recent enactment of the Inflation Reduction Act. Can we expect to see Acre starting more projects in the US? Well, the US markets, um, it's a very interesting question. We're, we're, as you know, we're, we're not there yet, um, but it has great potential. Um, and if you were to look at Look at the US versus Europe. I mean, for one angle, it has a very simple mechanism, which you've you've already mentioned, the Inflation Reduction Act, and the famous $85 per ton 45Q mechanism to help support the funding and the financials for capture and storage. Um, and the, the, if you look at the potential of the market, though, the actual footprint of emissions in the US is very large. Um, you also have uh, a good number of projects in the Midwest, in the, in the middle of the US, where storage is onshore. Um, and likely nearer and cheaper than the offshore options that we're looking at uh, in, in Europe. So when you add it all up, uh, the US has size on its, on its side, um, probably two or three times Europe in terms of the size of its ultimate emissions. Um, and you might find actually that more of those emissions are are able to be captured and stored more easily because of this onshore storage angle. I mean, we're not we're not sub service experts, and we're not in the US yet, but in, a, in any major way, we are doing some very low level study work. But we're not uh, we're not really um, uh, in, you know, involved with feet on the ground yet. But it is clearly a very very interesting market, and, and we think um, there's a lot of low hanging fruit, as they say, a lot of projects that could move quite quickly once the regulation around storage and so on is sorted out. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think we see also a lot of industries in the US like cement, gas to power and others where we have a good uh, background from our, from our experience in Europe and Norway and so on um, that probably translates very well to us being able to work effectively there as well. Great. Okay. And I have one last question for you here. And that is, what do you think the key drivers of success will be for the CCUS industry over the next five to 10 years? Oh, that's the that's the big question. Um, I think, um, well, firstly, um, I think we have to deliver uh, plants that work. So 
we have to, and this is when I say we, it's the royal we, it's the it's the industry. I think the industry has to be able to deliver facilities that actually do what they say. They 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 are built in you know two or three years. They work at ninety you know very high ninety nine percent availability. They capture ninety percent or ninety five percent of the CO two. They work well. They behave as they expected. I think that operational performance is is absolutely key for this industry being uh, accepted from the commercial side. Um, that's one. The second one I think is you have to see uh, policy support from governments remain stable because. Uh, as you know, the the the, the one issue that, that that deflects or delays business investment is volatility. So to have mm-hmm. a stable platform of policy, I think, and, and the level of support, whatever it is, whether it's medium or high, uh, that then allows the capital system to to work out how they can support it. So that's very important as well. And finally, I think I would say the public perception has got to work. So this industry, and this is this was actually a very important theme on our in our sort of creation back in the early two thousands. You know, the Norwegian government and our industrial partners uh, really pushed us to do a lot of work around the HSC or, or the environmental angle of carbon capture with a very simple view that if you're doing one thing for the environment, capturing CO2, if you're doing one thing for the environment that's, that's helpful, you shouldn't replace it with something else that could cause more issues in, in the future. So as much as you can, uh, we have here, as I mentioned before, we worked a lot having a very benign environmental profile around our process for carbon capture. So I think, you know, uh, the long story short, I think getting public support and getting the whole idea of investing in these industrial facilities that will capture CO2, uh, you need to have that public support as well. I think that that's really the, 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 the you know, the certainly would support policy and everything else that would allow this, allow this industry to grow strongly. Great answer. Again, we are joined by David Phillips, head of UK and investor relations at Acre Carbon Capture. David, thank you again for joining us on the podcast today. No, thank you. Thanks for the invite. (laughs) And thank you to everyone for tuning into the podcast. If you are interested in being a guest, please reach out to Carbon Capture Magazine. And until next time, have a great day.